In the previous video, we looked at the calculus of complex functions. We derived the cauchy riemann equations, which is a necessary and sufficient condition for analyticity of a complex function. I want to do a couple of examples here and then talk about whether there's a graphical relationship, a geometric relationship between the u's and the v's. So the cauchy riemann equations give us a mathematical relationship between the two. Is there a geometric relationship between the two? So let's look at the same examples we did in the last video. Let's determine whether w is equal to f of z, which is the complex conjugate of z, whether that's analytic. We already know the answer, it's not analytic. But now let's do it using the cauchy riemann equation, which is much simpler than the way we did it before. So we have x minus i, y, u is x, v is minus y. So u is x, the real part, v is minus y, the imaginary part. So then we simply check the derivatives in the cauchy riemann equations partial u partial x, well u is x, so that's 1. Partial v partial y, well v is minus y, so that's minus 1. Partial v partial x, no x's, so that's 0. Partial u partial y, no y's, so that's 0. So this equation is not satisfied, 1 does not equal minus 1, whereas this one is. So the cauchy riemann equations are not satisfied, they both of course have to be satisfied and therefore the complex conjugate of z is not an analytic function. Same conclusion as before, but in a much simpler way. So let's look at a second case. So w, f of z, is the square of x minus y plus 2i times the quantity x plus y. We want to determine, is this analytic? Is this function analytic? So u, of course, is the real part, that's u, and v is the imaginary part, 2 times the quantity x plus y. Evaluate the derivatives again, so partial u partial x, so that's 2 times x minus y times 1, partial v partial y, that's just 2, partial v partial x, that's also 2, and minus partial u partial y, well that is minus 2 times x minus y times minus 1. The negative signs cancel, so we get 2 times quantity x minus 1. This says that x minus y is equal to 1 will satisfy this first equation. Notice the second equation. Cancel the 2's again, and I have x minus y is equal to 1 also satisfies the second equation. So there are values of x and y that satisfy the cauchy riemann equations. But there is an issue. x minus y is equal to 1. Well, that's a straight line through the complex plane. So that could be the street in front of my house, but that does not incorporate the neighborhood, the houses in front and behind me. So a, a line does not constitute a neighborhood, and this function is not analytic anywhere, because the points on that line do not have a neighborhood within which the cauchy riemann equations are satisfied. All right, so let's look at another way that we can use the cauchy riemann equations. Let's say that we're given the imaginary part of a function. Here it's xy cubed minus x cubed y. So we're given the imaginary part and we want to find the corresponding real part, u. So the way we do that is to use the cauchy riemann equations. So the first one says that partial u partial x is equal to partial v partial y. And in this case, because v is xy cubed minus x cubed y, partial v partial y is simply 3xy squared minus y cubed. Likewise, the second of the cauchy riemann equations gives us that partial u partial y is minus partial v partial x. Well, I'm given v, so I can evaluate that. That's minus y cubed plus 3x squared y. So this gives me a relationship for partial u partial x and partial u partial y, from which I can get the u as a function of x and y. How do I do that? There's a couple of different ways to do it. I'll show you the way that I prefer to do it. So we take one of these, doesn't matter which one, I'll just take the first one, partial u partial x is 3xy squared minus y cubed, and then integrate with respect to x. So u of xy is the integral of this with respect to x. Now I've emphasized here that the quote unquote constant of integration now needs to be a function of y. And the reason is if I go backwards, if I take this result and I take the partial derivative with respect to x, this of course is zero. So I need to allow for my constant of integration to be a function of y in this case. Okay, so I integrate with respect to x. So that's 3 halves x squared y squared. 
minus a quarter x to the 4. Just integrating this, plus my unknown at this point function of y, c of y. Okay, so this is an expression for u of xy. Now we still need to find this function c of y. So what we do is we take this relationship, partial u, partial y. I now have an expression for u. I can differentiate that. Set it equal to this expression, and that will tell me what c of y needs to be. All right, so let's do that. So let's take partial u, partial y, and then set it equal to this. So here it is. We get 3x squared y plus c prime y is equal to minus y cubed plus 3x squared y. Now this is a good test because if I have terms that are not just functions of y, they have to cancel. And indeed here they do. Because I need to get just a function of y, no x's in order to do this ordinary integration. So these cancel and I have c prime of y is minus y cubed. I integrate that and it's minus a quarter y to the 4 plus now a true constant of integration c. All right, so this is what we got from the first integration and now we have our c of y minus a quarter y to the 4 plus c. So this gives us the most general expression that we can get for the real part of our analytic function given the v that we were provided. There's always going to be a constant of integration because you can always add a constant, it differentiates out. You take derivatives and of course it's gone. We say that u and v are harmonic conjugates of one another. So they are special from the point of view that this particular u with this particular v are analytic. u plus iv satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equations and is analytic, so we call them harmonic conjugates of one another. All right, now let's look at this question of how are u and v related geometrically or graphically? We saw how they're related through the Cauchy-Riemann equations mathematically. Are they related in any particular or any special way graphically? And it turns out they are, and it'll prove to be extremely helpful. So let's say again, we have an analytic function, w, which is f of z, is u plus i v. So to determine how they're related graphically, let's take a look at their slopes. Let's take a look at lines of constant u and lines of constant v and see how they're related. We call those contours. Contours of constant u, contours of constant v. And let's see how they're related graphically. So I'm going to define a line of constant u with the constant u1. So that's a contour. Think of a topographical map, for example. And a line of constant v, which is capital V1, equal to a constant. Those provide two curves through the complex plane. And we want to look at how they behave where they intersect. At locations where those two curves happen to intersect, how are they related to one another? Well, one thing we could do is to get their slopes. So let's get a general expression of the slope u equals a constant, and then the same thing v is equal to constant. And where they intersect, where those two contours intersect, let's take notice of how they're related graphically. So here's the total differential of u of x, y. So du is partial u partial x dx plus partial u partial y dy. That's the total differential of u, where u is a function of x and y. Now we're going to apply that along a line where u is equal to a constant. Because u is equal to a constant, du is just zero. So we have this expression, and we can solve for dy dx. Remember dy dx, that's just the slope, rise over run, of our curve. So dy dx along this line is minus partial u partial x over partial u partial y. All right, so we're, we're just gonna set that aside for now. Let's do the same thing for the line of constant v. Let's take the total differential. So v, once again, is a function of x and y. So dv is partial v partial x dx plus partial v partial y dy. And because v is equal to a constant along this contour, dv is equal to zero. So once again, we can take this expression solve for the slope dy dx of this curve. So that's going to be minus partial v partial x over partial v partial y. So if we compare these, you'll notice that I can't compare them. They're, this one involves u's, this one involves v's. But then remember, we have the Cauchy-Riemann equations. So I can take my partial v partial x and write that as negative partial u partial y. Likewise, I can take partial v partial y and write that as partial u partial x. So if I do that for my line of constant v, I now have partial u partial y over partial u partial x.
Now, if I compare this with this slope, and you look at that carefully, you'll see that the slope of the line of constant v is simply the negative reciprocal of the line of constant u. Whenever you see slopes are negative reciprocals of one another, that means they're orthogonal. They're normal, 90 degrees to each other. So that's how they're related graphically. Lines of constant u, lines of constant v, if u and v are the real and imaginary parts of a complex function that's analytic, wherever they intersect, they will always be mutually orthogonal. So let's take that last example and show that that is the case. So here I have lines of constant u, lines of constant v, one is solid, one is dashed. Here I've just written down the expression once again, real part and imaginary part, so u and v. And if I plot lines of constant u, lines of constant v, you'll notice that everywhere they intersect, they are orthogonal to one another. They intersect at a right angle. Now you'll notice this point at the center appears to be special. And the reason for that is because at the origin, at z is equal to zero, f prime of z is equal to zero. And that's what we call a critical point. We'll talk more about this later. But everywhere else in the domain other than the origin, every intersection is at right angles to one another. 